Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Well, today we're working on some gauge clusters. This one in particular. Um, well, I'm not going to do the work to this one, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing to it. Because this is an awesome gauge cluster set. But it's got one thing I don't like about it, and I'm going to show you what that is. So you notice I have a set of gauges all taken apart. Actually, here's what the gauge looks like. The speedometer. And I want to show you guys what the mechanism looks like. That's pretty much it right there. Your cable goes into here. And when the wheel spins, it spins this drum right here. Now you see it's not even reading. Because it has to go to a certain RPM. And then it turns the inner, the inner drum. Okay, so there's an outer drum here. Let's see if you guys can, uh, I can use it here. So there's an outer drum right here that spins with the cable. Just in one continuous motion. And it's like a clutch in there, like a like a um, magnetic piece. And when that pulls, it turns the spinometer needle. Okay. Alright. And also, it turns a worm gear underneath. So you have a gear underneath here, which turns the pink shaft on top here, which changes the ratio and turns another worm gear, which in tail turns your mechanism for your mileage. Until that works. Pretty cool. It's got a stopper right here. So if I move this bar right here, that's going to change where my zero is. So if your zero is off on your bike, in fact, I'm going to put this one out of adjustment for a second to show you. So I'm going to take a pair of pliers, bend this over. Okay, now my zero is going to be below zero. I want the zero to be at zero, so I'm just going to take this pair of pliers, bend this little tab. Until zero is on zero again. And that's how you set your zero. Real simple. But pretty cool. So that's what the speedometer mechanism looks like show you guys that one more time pretty cool huh put that off to the side okay so i want to show you guys on the on this right here this is the your cover you can take this all apart there are four screws underneath one two three and four and then you're going to take off these two these two right here hold your speedometer you can screw into that hole right there, and that hole right there, and this holds it to the back piece. And then, basically, it all just comes apart. Boom. Just like that. And then you got your turn, your high beam, and your neutral safety. And you got a dummy one. This one right here is just a plastic piece for your Kawasaki sign. But as you can tell on the back side, it doesn't light up. That's the part that I don't like. So when you're looking at your Kawasaki, you have got a flashlight, let's find one here. I'm gonna put the light on the back here. You got your, your turn, you got your high beam, and then you got your neutral, but you've got nothing on your um, Kawasaki. Now, if you're like me, you like one-off bikes, you like unique stuff, we're gonna make that light up. But I'm going to show you something else, too. I think that that right there was intended to be lit up. I'm going to show you a couple of theories behind that. If you look on the back, you can see a circle. Ah, can't really see it too well on that one. How about this one? You can see a nice dirt ring right there. See the circle? It's even indented a little bit. Okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to poke a hole. Grab a drill. Oh yeah. Power. And we're going to pop off that little lens. These, by the way, just pop out. There is nothing holding in. Just pop right up. All, all of them do, actually. And look on the inside, guys. Here's the part that I wanted to show you. On the inside. Tell me this right here was not meant to be lit up. See the circle in the middle there? Hmm. 
That looks like it was intended to be lit up to me. Looks like we even know where the light bulb is going to go. Well, that right there wasn't centered, was it? Talk about drilling off center. Woo! Way off, people. Way off. Well, let's see if we can compensate for that a little bit. A little better. Okay, that is the biggest drill bit that I can go. So I am going to go ahead and I am going to use my file right here and I'm going to make that hole bigger to match the size because I only use a 3 8 um, what do you call it there, drill and the hole is bigger than 3 8. So I am going to then take a break. I'm going to file this out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I did a really crappy job um, honing it out, you know, making it bigger. I didn't um, match it properly, but all you need is an extra socket. This is the different style bulb. I have some extra ones kicking around, but it will fit in here. And you make sure you, you do it so it's snug in there, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take these two wires right here, and you're going to tap into them right there. You're going to solder the red to the red, the black to the black, and heat shrink it. And then you'll have your second light. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Kevin, what's that going to look like? All right, let me see if I can get you guys to... You guys see me all right? Hopefully you can. You got your turn signal right there. These are a little bright because I'm using LED lights, but if you, you were using an incandescent bulb, so it'll be a lot less. I wish I had a regular light bulb to show you guys. It's um, actually... It'll be kind of like, you know... Well, this this light is too bright, but... It actually lights up... A, it has a gray background to it. And it really does look cool. So, I wonder if I can do something a little different to show you. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Still a little difficult to see, but you can see how it lights up the uh, the light gray. Lights up gray, and you can see Kawasaki on it. A um, little difficult to see the writing, but you know what they are. And then you can put it like that. And then right there would stay on. Um, you can also use this light if you're using accessories. So say you have accessories going, and you want them to come on. You can put that light on like that, wire it to your accessories, and then you can tell when your light, when your accessories are left on. So if you have like a 12 volt or a, um, or like a, a GPS mount or something, you can drill that hole out and use that as well. Um, pretty cool little thing to have. And it just uses an incandescent bulb. The LEDs are way too bright for it. You can't see nothing. You can also take it apart and re-stencil it so it's a little bit more vibrant. Um, you can do that as well. You can do all kinds of things. But that's what we do on this channel. I wanted to show it to you what it looks like. When it's on, it does kind of drown out the Kawasaki. But during the day, it looks really, really cool. At night, it just kind of looks like that light. Um, but that's pretty cool. And you can see where they had, like I said, where they were planning on doing something like that. Woo! Wow, i got a lot going on. So I figured I would do that video to show you guys that you can light up your Kawasaki. I have been asked that question a dozen times. And that right there would definitely make your bike unique. And you can, you, like I said, you can use that light for different things. You don't have to have it come on with that light. You can wire it if you have an accessory. And, uh, you know, you have it wired directly. And you have to manually shut it off. 
if you have it wired to that light right there, then you'll know that the light, that your accessory is on. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, just one of those type of things I wanted to touch base on with you guys. Okay, I think that's it for this one. So, guys, I'm off. I just wanted to give you guys that little tidbit of uh, information. And, um, hope everybody's doing good. And we'll be crack-a-lacking. we got some pretty cool stuff coming up. Waiting on parts, waiting on pieces, and that sort of thing. So, I was just dubbing around upstairs, and I had to pull the speedometer for a friend. And I had this broken, you can see the broken mount. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do a video on that, because that is pretty cool. And you can clean it up, too. I mean, there's a lot of, you can see how it's, like, sun-baked. Good time to clean it up. Um, I think if you use WD-40, you need to spray it on a rag first, because I'm pretty sure it'll wipe away the lettering. Let's find out. Nope, doesn't wipe away the lettering. If you keep going on it, it will. I used WD-40 on it. Cleaned it up quite a bit. Even on the front lens here. You can really bring it back. Do not use brake clean. Brake clean will kill the lens. You can see how that is, you know. So. And then the speedometer. It'll be like vibrant, you know. All right, guys, I'm off. You guys have a great day, and uh, I will be talking to you guys later.